An orc warboss is the largest and most powerful of all the orcs in his tribe. He is a bloodthirsty and battle-hardened warrior equipped with the best war gear the tribe can provide. A warboss is in charge of all aspects of his tribe's existence, purely because of the size and his prowess in the savage art of war. Though some warbosses are cunning enough to plan a battle before the bullets start flying, it is only on the front lines that a warboss truly excels. When the battle is raging, these monsters are given full reign to their battle lust, charging into the ranks of the enemy and slaughtering everything in their path. In a way, the warboss becomes a living embodiment of orcdom and commands respect and fear from friend and foe alike. The most important thing to remember is that when an orc gains the position of a warboss, he did it through a combination of cunning, violence, and deafeningly loud shouting. Great intellect is not necessary for the great power that comes with being an orc warboss. In fact, many warbosses are as thick as a bullgrox. We could keep going on and on about what a warboss truly is, but in reality, he's the biggest orc in the tribe. He commands attention, he commands power. With that said, I want to welcome you guys back to another 40 Facts About the 40k Universe. I am your host, Gersh1, and today we're going to be talking about the Orc War Boss. If you're new to the channel, we post Warhammer 40k lore videos every single day. If you guys have any suggestions or questions about the 40k Universe, just ask down in the comment section below, and I'll either try to create a video for you guys, or I'll just answer it down in the comment section below. And if you enjoy our content, enjoy the channel, consider hitting the like button, sharing with your friends, and thanking our patrons on Patreon. It is because of them that we can do this. Link in the description if you guys want to support us. It's just a dollar a month. But with all that said, oh, and stay to the end of the video because I'm going to be showing off my war boss to my personal orc uh, war band that I created quite some time ago. Uh, so check that out at the end of the video. But with all that said, let's get into 40 facts on different orc war bosses. Amongst the Greenskins, it is inevitable that at some time a great and fearsome leader will rise to sweep aside all rivals and unite countless warring tribes under his brutal leadership. Arbutz the Incredible was such an orc. He emerged from the wild and primitive worlds of the galaxy's southern western rim. Here, orcs battled orcs, just as they had done so for centuries on dozens of worlds infected by Greenskins since an age no one could remember. Arbutz at first swept over his own world and then others in the same system, sweeping aside rival warlords and taking their followers for his own. The orcs reveled in the uproar caused by this ambitious orc warlord and his ceaseless invasion of other tribal territories. For months, tribes gleefully battled tribe, eagerly hurtling themselves into the chaos of battle with a kind of abandon only greenskins were capable of. With each new battle formed, Arbutz proved his dominance anew, effortlessly defeating all comers. But eventually things changed. Where once each new warlord had battled and resisted Arbutz, now they fell behind him, joining his warband and bringing with them their own greenskin tribe, keen and hungry for war. Orcs never battled orcs again. Tribe after tribe flocked to this new Arbutz, until at last they formed a great and unruly mass barreling along the sound of a single monotone chant. Yeah. Now Arbutz was unleashed upon the galaxy at large. Such an ancient and distant corner of the galaxy, Arbutz was first forced across thousands of light years of wilderness, rampaging across one uninhabited planet after another, his boys chasing and hunting any large predator or huge beast they could find. They were desperate to get a proper fight, but they wouldn't have to wait long. In the Cypher subsector, Arbutz and his wog swept across several ancient worlds of the Eldar. Here, survivors of the long-ago fallen race lived in so-called Exodite communities, the last sorrowful remnants of the once great Eldar Empire. As the Greenskins poured across the system, the Eldar rode to war. They were mounted atop great bestial lizards, armed with weapons far beyond the technology available to the Greenskins, and moving with a graceful ease that the lumbering Greenskins simply could not match. But for all this, the orcs were vast and unassailable the ancient Eldar were swept away in the few short months it took the orcs to cross the system. Arbutz and his boys marched on, and here on the most distant boundaries of the Imperium, the orcs crashed into a dozen worlds of man. The orcs cut a bloody swath through the Imperial defenders until finally running out of steam on the Imperial death world of Garang, where they were finally stopped by the indigenous life form as much as they were by the Imperial defenders. By the end of the fighting, the entire Cypher subsector had been overrun and conquered by the Greenskins. Although Orc war bosses are incredible at unifying the Greenskins, it is a complete tragedy when a powerful war boss dies and his horde of warriors descend into infighting trying to figure out who's boss. Such was the case for the infamous Orc war boss Gargash Korbul. 
Corbul was born on one of the many greenskin infected planets near the Damocles Gulf in the Segmentum Ultima. Nothing made Corbul special from any other orc in his tribe, until one day, out of pure boredom, he decided to pick a fight with one of the strongest and most aggressive orcs. To Corbul's surprise, he clobbered the orc bully and gained his tribe's respect and fear. While most orcs would have basked in this newfound leadership role, Corbul decided to travel to the neighboring tribe and challenge the toughest orc there, stomping that orc's head into the ground and roaring his dominance to both tribes. Corbul realized every single orc around him was willing to follow him into the next fight. Eager to gather more lads, he marched his growing tribe to the next victim. But this time it wasn't just Corbul that fought. His entire mob assaulted the new tribe. After subduing those lads, Corbul dispatched his mob of Gretchen to warn the surrounding orc clans that Corbul and his boys were the strongest greenskins around, and they were going to prove it by crushing every single tribe on the planet. After uniting several orc tribes, the now war boss Corbul declared a wog against the imperial worlds across the Perillian subsector. While Corbul focused primarily on the world of Perillia itself, as it was the subsector's primary manufacturer of industrial materials. Corbul anticipated imperial reinforcements and stationed a small battle fleet on the outskirts of the system. A limited number of weird boys utilizing their strange psychic abilities were able to pull the arriving Imperial reinforcements prematurely out of the warp and right into Corbul's cunning trap. During the Void battle, Commissar Kyphus Kane and his aide Ferric Jurgen managed to eject from the troop ship and land on Perillia behind Orc lines. Marshalling a force of scattered planetary defense forces, Imperial Guard troopers, and various civilian refugees, the force made its way towards the Imperial-held lines. But somehow, unexpectedly, they managed to blunder themselves into a planetary defense force supply cache being utilized by the war boss himself. Kane and Jurgen inadvertently found Corbul's quarters and were rushed by the enraged war boss. Though no match for the speed and strength of the mega armored war boss, Kane used this to his advantage and managed to get in close enough to the massive orc to fire his last pistol at point blank range into Corbul's eye socket, killing him instantly. The knobs that were still there immediately fell to arguing and infighting amongst themselves trying to figure out who was going to be the next boss. With Corbul gone, the threat of Wog Corbul was rendered null as the orc mobs descended into anarchy. When a warboss can hold on to his power, the possibility to expand his territory grows at an alarming rate, as more and more orcs from the neighboring systems flock to his banner. Some want to challenge the warboss, others simply want a good fight. Now a truly clever war boss will convince other leaders to fight with him on a path of conquest throughout the galaxy, just like war boss Gragnats, who gathered several war bosses and launched a devastating wog into the Vork subsector. Gragnats invasion force began as a few hundred thousand orcs besieging the agri world of Euronis. Rival war bosses saw that the fighting wasn't as great and they split off to launch their own wogs with varying degrees of success. But then suddenly, Wog Big Luck emerged from the dimensional gateway known as the Wormwall. His fleet was augmented by dimensional weaponry, which further enhanced Gragnat's already formidable Grand Armada. By the time Gragnat's Grand Armada reached the Vork subsector, its numbers further swelled with news of this great weapon, forming a greenskin onslaught capable of crushing several systems all at once. Either way, the more notorious a Wog gets, the more dangerous it becomes to the other races. Such was the case in the Ghoul Stars, where the powerful and mighty Mangler of Bork rampaged through the fringe system. Known by most as Warboss Clawjaw, the pig-headed orc is recognized and feared by many Imperial commanders and generals for his peculiar success on the field of warfare. Warlord Clawjaw's true infamacy stems not from his ferociousness or even his ingenuity, but from his lunacy. Once known simply as Cog, this primitive thug of an orc lived on the prosperous world of Borg. Though slow of wit, Cog grew to a formidable size through fighting and eating. Cog's meteoric rise would not be at all what his tribe expected. Possessed of strength and a fierce personality, he rose to unite the tribes of the Greenskins on his world, bashing his visions of conquest into his tribesmates with blunt objects. Now for some weird reason, the tyrant resolved to shoot down the moon of Bork with an unfeasibly large gun known as the Crater Maker, before taking his walk to the stars. What made the war boss's horde so powerful was a brigade of battle wagons. Each vehicle was incredibly well armored, and the ground shook when the brigade was on the move. To the dismay of the Imperial army sent to intercept him, the mighty Mangler lived up to his name. Wog Bork ultimately collapsed the defenses of the Ghoul Stars and claimed a great area of the Galactic Fringe. Very little is truly known about the early history of the Orc War Boss Grog Iron Teeth, a disgusting and abusive greenskin. Iron Teeth perfectly fit the role of a dangerous Orc Warlord. 
But unlike so many of his destructive peers, Iron Teeth never truly belonged to a specific orc clan or tribe. Through his rise amongst the ranks of the orcs in the eastern fringe of the galaxy, Iron Teeth enjoyed getting stuck in with the richest orcs of the Bad Moons clan, as much as foot slogging into battle alongside the dull-witted greenskins of the Golf clan. Although he never obsessed about speeding into the enemy on top of a rocket-propelled ramshackled vehicle, Iron Teeth did learn the value of a fast and powerful warship. As one conflict led to the other, Grog found himself at the head of a small fleet of warships that plundered Imperial trading routes and marauded the blue-skinned colonists of the Tau Empire. Even with his success as a Corsair, Iron Teeth never called himself a freebooter. Instead, he spit in the face of any orc captain that attempted to claim him as a brethren. His aggressive nature attracted many would-be usurpers, who simply succumbed to Grog's strength and aggression. Through his natural rise in power, Grog inherited, or at least bullied into submission, hundreds of orc odd boys. These mechs, pain boys, and weird boys elevated the new war chief's power and allowed his army to diversify in its deadliness, until everyone viewed his army as the toughest in the sector. Uncharacteristically, Grog grew in his tactical acumen as he maneuvered through subsector after subsector, plundering planets for materials, slaves, and a good find. Like a bulldozer, Iron Teeth left shattered ruins in his wake. For the first couple of years, the War Chief and his boys came into conflict with other greenskins more so than any other race, something that only propelled his fleet strength. As his victories grew, so did his thirst for bigger and bigger fights, until Iron Teeth was large enough to rally a full-on walk. Blessed is the mind too small for doubt. I hope you guys enjoyed the lore portion of this video. Now I want to showcase my war boss. Uh, this is going to be slightly different uh, Blessed is the mind video because I'm not actually building it with you. Uh, this is a model that I created a long time ago, probably like two years ago, maybe a year ago. I can't really remember. Um, but it was a gift from the Sound Alchemist. It actually comes from Age of Sigmar. So it's an orc clan orc that I converted with some 40k pieces. So like his shoulder plate comes from a Khan set. The machine gun comes from, or the gun comes from, I believe a truck set. Uh, and then just various pieces like the power claw and all that kind of stuff comes from like knob sets. Um, so it's just a, 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 um, a 40k orc. War boss that I converted with inspiration from Simon Taylor from the Instagram page called Emperor's Crusade. I think he has a YouTube channel too. I'll put a link down in the description below if it's still active. Um, but the um, the actual model came out really awesome, as you guys can see, and I was really proud of it. It's the only war boss that I've, because I've had like three or four war bosses before this one uh, that I really enjoyed. It's just a bummer that the war boss is not really a, a model that I would want to play on the tabletop as of right now. I think you can get more out of a, um, a Big Mac or a Weird Boy or anything that has speed to it. Uh, like that uh, war trike. Uh, it's it's just amazing on the tabletop. Eventually, hopefully, if the um, the codex comes out, uh, hopefully war bosses are competitive on the tabletop. Um, but yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I hope you guys enjoyed watching this uh, cool little showcase. Uh, thanks for listening, guys, and I will talk to you tomorrow. This is Gershwan with One Mind Syndicate signing out. <laughs>